What we're doing is we, we don't tell you use our product, it is your platform. We don't do that. What we essentially say is here's a building block that would be helpful for your platform. vCluster, DevPod, those are great building blocks for a platform team to build on top of um, and essentially you know, complement their platform with these capabilities. Hi, this is your host, Abdul Bharatiya, and we are here at KubeCon Chicago. And today we have with us once again, Lucas Gentry, CEO and co-founder of Loft. Lucas, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, good to finally have a session with you like in person. I've only seen you virtually so yes, far. Yes. I mean, we've met at KubeCon before, but never for a recording. And uh, interesting is that the company was created. We have been talking since the very early days. And also we have seen the growth of the company. Now you have a, a great booth here, Gold, right? Oh yeah, we upgraded to the Gold sponsorship. Exactly, so I do want to talk a bit about the company before we talk about Vcluster Pro and technology spec. Let's talk about the, the growth of the company that you have seen in these years and what has been driving this growth. Two and a half years ago, we were just two or three people to start out with. Uh, now we're over 25. Uh, we've seen uh, a massive amount of growth in, in, in our open source project, uh, Vcluster. Uh, so much adoption. Uh, we've seen commercial success with some of the largest uh, enterprises in the world, and it's just fantastic to see. And you know, I think uh, there are a lot of KubeCon talks uh, that mention vCluster. They may not be specifically about vCluster. They may be about something else. But then people mention that they're building this on top of vCluster, which is even more exciting to actually see. And which actually brings us to uh, vCluster, vCluster Pro, you folks and all. So talk about the evolution graph of vCluster itself. From open source all the way to the commercial offering, because we discussed earlier also, open source has its own limitations, you know, because customers want more. And because of the nature of open source, you can do only so much because then, a lot of other folks don't want it. That's where the commercial. So talk about the evolution of vCluster Pro. We started vCluster uh, two and a half years ago. And within the first 12 months, uh, about a million virtual clusters have been created. And we thought that was amazing. That was a really great milestone. Uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, we hit 40 million virtual clusters. So now two and a half years in, you can see the growth trajectory in this open source pro uh, project. It's, it's crazy. It, I feel like we're in a similar situation as you know Docker was in the early day, or probably back then VMware was in the early days. You know, initially it's a lot about convincing people that this is the right architectural choice, and that it makes sense to add yet another layer of virtualization. Right? Initially, people are like, "Do we need another layer? It sounds complicated. Why are we doing this? Right? Who manages this?" But then they see the benefits of it, and they give it a try, and they, they see, "Whoa, this is actually going to be the, the way forward." I think. Um, you know, one interesting uh, thought I had uh, throughout this conference while talking to people is if you're in an enterprise today and you need a server, nobody is going to go into a data center anymore and plugging in a server for you. They're going to spin up a virtual machine. And the same thing will happen for Kubernetes. In five years from now, if you need a Kubernetes cluster, you're going to get a virtual one by default. And then only for the edge cases, someone goes in and plugs a server for you, someone really gives you a real Kubernetes cluster, because the virtual ones uh, are just so much more cost effective um, and so much easier to spin up and maintain uh, long term. And then you mentioned we launched vCluster Pro, uh, really, really exciting step uh, to bring vCluster to the enterprise, give them the confidence to run uh, vCluster in production, massive amounts of workloads. Um, really exciting what we shipped with, with vCluster Pro uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. I remember when you talk about, there was a talk about vCluster and somebody from AWS was interested and you know, a, a lot of, you know, they, so uh, community is driving a lot of things. So I also want to understand how community has received it. Yeah, the community uh, is just fantastic. It's, we, we have like over 2,500 people in our Slack channel. Um, and you see just the interactions there. People help each other. Uh, people create, uh, you know, pull requests, and they open uh, issues and suggest new features. Um, yeah, folks are just like really, really excited about this project. Um, you know, everybody really wants to grab these hoodies and, and t-shirts that we have. You know, they identify with the project. They they love the technology, and they are part of it. Right? They were early adopters. They're really excited about it. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's fascinating to see that so many people um, believe that vCluster is the, is the way forward. When we look at Loft, when we look at vCluster, you have a lot of other open dev pod and other open source projects. Talk a bit about with the changing market, you know, 
we can talk about platform engineering, we can talk about DevOps. Where does all this offering fit? We can look at it from a myopic view of V Cluster Pro, or we can look at it a broader frame of Loft and its role in the ecosystem. Obviously, platform engineering is the buzzword this year at KubeCon, right? We always have a buzzword. It may be DevSecOps or, you know, back in the days it was more DevOps, right? Then it was multi-tenancy for you, then developer experience. And uh, now we're platform engineering. That's okay, right? I think the, the big difference um, of, you know, what, what a lot of people do is they phrase their existing products in the term platform engineering now. Um, what we're doing is we, we don't tell you use our product, it is your platform. We don't do that. What we essentially say is, here's a building block that would be helpful for your platform. vCluster, DevPod, those are great building blocks for a platform team to build on top of um, and essentially you know, complement their platform with these capabilities. Uh, but we never say, this is the platform, you know, this is the opinionated way of how you should be doing things, um, which I think is very different from a lot of uh, messaging that, that, that people are driving at KubeCon these days. Since we are talking about labels, you know, and jargons, new buzzwords, from cultural change perspective, what kind of changes you are seeing? Because you have been part of this community ecosystem and you're also playing a very critical role there. So, so talk about the culture side. Yeah, I'm I'm super ecstatic about uh, you know the whole like CNCF ecosystem and and uh, you know you you come to KubeCon and I feel like Amsterdam was amazing. Um, this one is even topping it. Um, I think we're we're fully back uh, from the the COVID recovery, right? Uh, Detroit felt still a little half baked, uh, but the past uh, you know. Uh, KubeCon in Amsterdam and, and this one in, in Chicago is just phenomenal. And it, it's really crazy to see that, you know, a community has formed around Kubernetes and the tooling around cloud native, um, you know, open source solutions and, and related vendor products uh, that always comes together and there's so much inspiration and knowledge, knowledge exchange. To me, KubeCon is always very, very exciting, uh, but also very exhausting because you have like a million different ideas and conversations. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's something I always look forward to twice a year. And I want to now talk about the different kind of culture, which is the culture within companies. We talked about platform engineering. What kind of cultural change you're seeing? Because, you know, as you rightly said, you know, there was a theme about DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, and every year it's, it's, it's less to do with uh, a new label. Sometimes it's more to do with how companies are leveraging. So what are you seeing there? Yeah, we're definitely seeing that uh, it's not blindly shift left anymore. I think that was, it's another buzzword from, you know, a few years ago, I guess. Everything needed to be shift left, right? Security, provisioning, admin responsibilities. And then people realized, oh, maybe that slows our engineers down. And maybe not everything should be completely shifted left. And I think today um, we're shifting the right kind of things left. And other things we're trying to standardize on. I think that's really what platform engineering is. Uh, in my opinion, it's... On the one hand side, you're standardizing things, you're streamlining processes, uh, but at the same time, you're trying to retain the autonomy and the velocity that your engineering teams need. And that, that's, a, that's a fine kind of line to walk. That's something you've got to balance. And um, I think the, the, the trend towards platform engineering in a lot of these companies is emphasizing the importance of, hey, we got to standardize and we got to um, you know, put our compliance and security and provisioning standards in place across the company, but without actually hurting developer experience, without slowing anybody down. I think that's the really big benefit in terms of mind shift that has happened uh, through platform engineering. And we're early. Like there's so many companies that are just, you know, forming these platform teams and they, they have questions like, does a platform team have a separate budget? Or is this IT or engineering budget? Where, where does it come from, right? Um, it's still very, very early days. We see that with tons of our customers just starting out with the platform engineering journey, but it, it's an exciting one to start. Do you envision a new term, new jargon? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure we'll have a new term next year. <laughs> I also want to talk about CoreWeave. You know, you folks, you know, partnered with them. Uh, you also had a session here with them. Uh, talk a bit about this partnership, how, what it is about, 
and how it's benefiting Loft and Corvi. Yeah, Corvi is, is a really exciting company. You know, if uh, the first time we met them was when I think they just had raised their Series A, they were a lot smaller than they are today, uh, a lot less known than they are today. And when they uh, told me back then that they're effectively planning to compete with AWS on GPUs, I thought that was crazy. I thought that was like a, you know, a really, really hard challenge. And I'm like, who, who's, who wants to fight the giant, right? They do, and they're very successful doing it. And that's super exciting to see. I mean, uh, now, two years later, seeing them as a customer and using vCluster Pro as part of the Core Weave cloud architecture is super exciting. Um, the joint talk that we had, I think there were so many questions afterwards, right? People came up to us. Um, I feel like every second person coming to the booth now has questions about like, um, how does that work? I want to dig a little deeper. I'm super curious. Um, it's, it, it's very fruitful, I think, for us as a company um, and for Coreweave as well. I think, it, you know, one thing that gets me really excited about Coreweave is they're very open. They build on open source and they're willing to share what they're building internally. They're going to KubeCon, giving a talk, and actually explaining how the inner workings of their cloud platform. Not every cloud vendor would do that. Uh, they do. And that really shows their commitment uh, to the community, to open source, right? And to giving back. They've been amazing partners for us. And I think they, uh, they you know, mentioned that during their talk as well. They're planning to launch an open source project on their own. Um, and I think that's really exciting. I, I, I can't wait uh, for this partnership to, to grow even further. Just for our audience, what do they do? Coreweave is a specialized cloud provider. Um, they essentially let you uh, spin up GPUs mainly to run your uh, inference workloads, your AI and machine learning uh, applications. And um, you know they, they are building a lot of their cloud platform entirely on Kubernetes. I think that makes them very special. I think none of the existing uh, legacy cloud providers out there can say that they are from top to bottom through the entire stack based on Kubernetes. Coreweave is. And that's really, really exciting for us to partner with them uh, as a really true cloud native, um, you know, cloud provider. Uh, we're so excited to be to be part of their journey. And how are they leveraging vCluster? In our talk, we we outlined this, and I you know recommend for anybody to watch the recording. Uh, what essentially happens is their customers um, need Kubernetes. You know, a lot of these like leading edge AI companies like OpenAI. You look at their engineering block, OpenAI does pretty much everything with Kubernetes, right? So a lot of people that want to build uh, AI workloads are obviously also wanting to build on Kubernetes. And Coreweave hands out Kubernetes to their customers. And then um, the question is, do they create like a real heavyweight cluster for every customer? Or do they create lightweight virtual clusters with the capability to have shared nodes to uh, put workloads on shared uh, worker clusters, but also dedicated GPU nodes. Um, and that's really important because if you are an early stage uh, startup, you just raised your Series A, right? Um, you may not be able to afford dedicated heavyweight, large scale C uh, GPU nodes um, with a cloud provider like Coreweave. Uh, so you may opt for the shared route um, and get that compute at a, at a much cheaper rate. But then when you really need it and you want these dedicated um, nodes, you can add them. And the experience is exactly the same with vCluster. That's why they're using vCluster under the hood. I cannot not talk about the hottest topic, which is generative AI. So I want to hear from you is when we look at generative AI, either from Loft or from Kubernetes perspective, what does it mean? It could be two ways. One is Loft or Kubernetes for generative AI or generative AI for Loft? How do you look at it? Just like with, with pretty much any um, AI or microservice workload, uh, we're the, we the compute and, and architecture layer below, right? Um, the fundamental piece that, that lets you run and, and scale workloads um, across uh, servers and machines, right? And a lot of these um, AI and, and ML systems, they're very large scale distributed systems inherently, right? And that's, that's what Kubernetes is, is really good at, running these kind of systems. Um, also getting increasingly really good at, at running large-scale batch workloads. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on, on, on that stuff as well. Um, and I think 
uh, you know, the other way around. I've definitely seen some exciting startups as well um, to, you know, build AI into uh, their products to kind of facilitate managing, debugging Kubernetes, right? Um, but I think that's like, that's day zero. There's, there's uh, you know, so much to explore still in, in that domain. Um, we're not too deep into that space uh, ourselves, uh, but I've seen some really exciting proofs here at KubeCon just walking by and, and chatting with a couple of folks. Uh, I think there, there's some interesting stuff coming in that direction. Of course, you folks have a lot of things in the pipeline. Some you can share, some you cannot share because you're working on it. But just give us a teaser of what next to expect from Loft. Yeah, we're working on some really, really exciting features. Um, uh, a lot of integrations. Um, Backstage, for example, is really on the top of our list because uh, it seems, you know, very, very heavily used in the enterprise, um, and that's that's the plain field uh, field that we're in. Um, and there's there's other exciting stuff coming directly into uh, the clusters uh, itself. One is the capability to snapshot and restore virtual clusters, which will actually allow you to transfer virtual clusters even, uh, you know, between Kubernetes clusters or even between clouds. Uh, that's something our customers are really, really excited about. And um, yeah, I think we're, uh, we're looking at a commercial cluster API integration. So far, we have a cluster API provider in the open source, uh, but no, no commercial support for it. And, uh, you know, it's definitely not, um, it's definitely more of a side project at this point, uh, but we want to integrate it directly into vCluster Pro and make it an essential uh, part for folks that are betting on cluster API. Uh, so there's some really exciting uh, topics that, that we're working on in that direction. Lucas, once again, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talk about all these exciting you know, news. Curvy was exciting one. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for having me today.